Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Job Nimbus 101 workshop. Last time, we talked about what work, word, work orders were used for, how to enable them, and how to separate your different work orders into trades. Today, we're going to go a bit more in depth, talk about how to create them and how to use them in your Job Nimbus account. I'm Dan. I'm Logan. We're so happy to have you with us. Now, like Dan said, today we're going to get into the actual use of work orders. This is going to include how to make them simply and easily from your existing financial documents, how they can be sent out and assigned to subcontractors or members of your crew, and how to keep track of all that information inside Job Nimbus and help it actually make your business run smoother. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we're going to be working in Grisella's account. Now, if you have work orders enabled, you'll see that there is this work order tab that showed up in your contact or jobs file. So go ahead and click on it. Now, if you're using jobs, we suggest that you create your work orders in your job files, but today we're going to be creating it in a contact file. Now, once you're in your work order tab, click on add work order. It is that easy. Now we could create a work order from scratch manually adding in every single line item, or we could use an existing estimate. Now we already have an existing estimate, so we're going to do that. What's really cool about estimates is you can create an estimate and then convert it into your work order, your invoice, your material, material order, your budget, anything, and you won't have to do double entry, and we like that. So let's use estimate 1852 for this work order. We're going to be using the roofing design template. Uh, we have, we're going to also be using the roofing type. Remember, these are the different work order types, the trade types that we talked about last time. We have it assigned to the right people. We're also going to assign it to a subcontractor, Gabe Perry. Now, down here, this is what, the, what information the work order pulled from our estimate. We have our labor teardown, our shingles, our vent, our nails, and then we have this labor cost and siding. Now these don't really go with roofing. If I want to, I could create a separate work order and include this information for the siding part of the project that we're working on. But for now, I'm going to delete these line items and I'm going to actually add in a new line item for roofing labor. This is going to tell our subcontractor what we are working on. We're going to be working on the teardown. We're going to be working on putting a new roofing and new roof. And we're going to be using these materials to create that. So right now I'm going to be giving some special instructions to our subcontractor, which is roof teardown, uh, use provided shingles for new roof. I can also add an internal note, which is oversee project, no overtime. We want our employees to be able to go back to their families. And there we have it. So let's save this work order. Now here we can see, this is what the work order will look like to our clients or to our subcontractors. And if you notice, there's no financial information here. There's no cost, there's no price. That's because a work order is not your proposal, it is not your invoice, it's not a financial document. It is a document that tells what work will be done on the project. We Here we see that there's gonna be a teardown, there's gonna be labor to put a new roof on, and these are the products that will be used. It also tells the quantity of those products that will be used. So it's easy for our subcontractors to know what needs to be done. So here we've got all that internal information and this is what it will look like as a PDF document. That's exactly what anybody that we send it to will see, whether that's a member of our crew or subcontractor or for some reason, a customer. If we scroll up to the top, we'll see some internal information. For instance, here we can see cost, we can see that specific internal note as opposed to just the customer note, which is what we see down here. We can also see our workflow information over here, who the contact is, 
who it's assigned to, what subcontractor it's assigned to, and so forth. If we scroll down to the very bottom, we're going to see our activity. Now, this is all the important information that's cropped up inside the work order. For instance, when it was created, who it's been assigned to, and that it was sent via email. We can add in an additional note, just like we could on a customer. In a lot of ways, you can think of a work order as a smaller contact. So here's our note. Note is supplies have been delivered. We could add an attachment as a photo. We could at mention someone just like we could on a normal note, but we're good for now. So you'll see that show up right here. Now you might be wondering what makes something show up here at the top as opposed to inside the work order itself. Well, if you remember from last week, that's going to be determined by our template. Let's go take a quick review of that. So we're going to go ahead into our settings, go to templates, scroll all the way to the bottom to our work order templates and take a look at the roofing template that we have been working with. The external information, what's shown on a PDF or the example right here, is marked in this column. The internal information is marked in this column. Now, it can't be shown externally if it's not shown internally. If we choose not to show it internally, it'll also vanish from the customer because we always want at least as much access internally as we give the customer. Something else that you'll be able to do with your work orders is you'll be able to see them on your calendar. So if we scroll in here, we see here is that work order for Grisella in two different colors for the people that are assigned to it, Aaron and Charles. If we click into the work order, it's going to pull up all of the relevant information on the right hand side, including the recent note, who it's assigned to, what subcontractor is working with it, and so forth. We could even click in and view the document right here on the page. Something else we can do is we can pop back into Grisella, go to that work order, and we can email it from our action menu right here. So we're going to email the work order. We can choose the contact or any of the subcontractors in our system. So we're also just going to send this out to uh, Luis. And we can choose which template we're using. We'll use the default and we'll send mail. Perfect. Now, something else you might have noticed while we're working on this is that we could change the status right here. So I've assigned this work order. I'm going to move it to assigned. And let's go see the last place that we might be using our work orders, which is inside our work order board. Now, this is an easy visual place for you to check out information in your work order. Now, this is an easy visual place for you to check out information about your ongoing work orders. And as you can see, we have a lot. Maybe we need to uh, cut down a little bit, get some more of this done. Here's that Grisella project. We can see the information that this is a roofing project and that it's due today. So let's go ahead and move it to in progress. And uh, we're gonna call that about good. We'll just wait for our subcontractors to finish it out. Now, like Dan said, we'd also be able to make several different work orders from our single estimate, track each of them here. And that allows us to not worry too much about different trades running at the same time and manage them effectively. Now, next week, we'll go over the last bits of information that you'll need to use work orders effectively. That is how to customize them, how to automate them, and otherwise make them really efficient for your business. Thanks so much for coming today. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, we've got some fantastic options for you. You can rewatch any of our videos on YouTube. You can check out our knowledge base with written articles. Or if you'd like to talk to a real live actual person, you can get in touch with our support team via phone or email using the information here. Everybody have a great day.